In a resplendent cloud, the Holy Spirit appeared. The Father's voice was heard. This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. Today is the celebration of the transfiguration of the Lord. Holy Mass is offered for the intentions of Betty Zavaro. And your prayers were also requested today for the repose of the soul of Father Tom Jordan, who died yesterday afternoon after a long illness. He was assistant priest here from 94 to 95, and was my successor in Romford. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and prepare ourselves for these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my eyes, in what I have done and in what I have heard to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my mistreatment. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary and the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to be God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord of heaven and King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who in the glorious transfiguration of your only begotten Son, confirmed the mysteries of faith by the witness of the fathers, and wonderfully prefigured our full adoption to sonship, Grant, we pray to your servants, that listening to the voice of your beloved Son, we may merit to become co-heirs with him, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. A reading from the book of Daniel. As I watched, thrones were set in place, and one of great age took his seat. His robe was white as snow, the hair of his head as pure as wool. His throne was a blaze of flames, its wheels were a burning fire. A stream of fire poured out, issuing from his presence. A thousand thousand waited on him. Ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. A court was held and the books were opened. I gazed into the visions of the night and I saw, coming on the clouds of heaven, one like a son of man, he came to the one of great age and was led into his presence. On him was conferred sovereignty, glory and kingship. And men of all peoples, nations and languages became his servants. His sovereignty is an eternal sovereignty which shall never pass away nor will his empire ever be destroyed. The word of the Lord. The Lord is King, most high above all the earth. The Lord is King, most high above all the earth. 
The Lord is King, let earth rejoice. Let all the coastlands be glad. Cloud and darkness are his raiment, his throne, justice and right. The Lord is King. The mountains melt like wax before the Lord of all the earth. The skies proclaim his justice. All peoples see his glory. The Lord is King. For you indeed are the Lord, most high above all the earth, exalted far above all spirits. The Lord is King, most high above all. A reading from the second letter of St. Peter. It was not any cleverly invented myths that we were repeating when we brought you the knowledge of the power and the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. We had seen his majesty for ourselves. He was honoured and glorified by God the Father when the sublime glory itself spoke to him and said, This is my son, the beloved. He enjoys my favour. We heard this ourselves, spoken from heaven, when we were with him on the holy mountain. So we have confirmation of what was said in prophecies, and you will be right to depend on prophecy and take it as a lamp for lighting a way through the dark until the dawn comes and the morning star rises in your minds. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. This is my son, the beloved. He enjoys my favour. Listen to him. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus took with him Peter and James and his brother John and led them up a high mountain where they could be alone. There in their presence he was transfigured. His face shone like the sun and his clothes became as white as the light. Suddenly Moses and Elijah appeared to them. They were talking with them. Then Peter spoke to Jesus. Lord, he said, it is wonderful for us to be here. If you wish, I will make three tents here, one for you, one for Moses and one for Elijah. He was still speaking when suddenly a bright cloud covered them with shadow. And from the cloud there came a voice which said, This is my son, the beloved. He enjoys my favour. Listen to him. When they heard this, the disciples fell on their faces, overcome with fear. But Jesus came up and touched them. Stand up, he said. Do not be afraid. And when they raised their eyes, they saw no one but only Jesus. As they came down from the mountain, Jesus gave them this order. Tell no one about the vision until the Son of Man has risen from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. I think it was one day last week when it was particularly sunny outside and I came into the church from the courtyard and it took me a few seconds to adjust to the darkness here. I was almost kind of squinting to see the light had been so bright and the contrast inside the church was so great. 
And it struck me that this is what was in the mind of many of the great architects of our great cathedrals across Europe. If you go into many of them, the very dark, especially Gothic architecture with the heavy stained glass windows makes you almost want to rub your eyes so that you can see ahead. And I think that was deliberate on the part of the architects. Because when we come into a church, when we come into a sacred space, we're meant to feel a little bit disorientated, a little bit uncomfortable, because we're coming not into a domestic space, we're not coming to do something commonplace, we're coming into a place where we are going to be transfigured, where we're going to have an encounter with the Almighty, an encounter with the one whom we cannot see but we try to represent in the sacredness of everything around us. And that's why all of our architecture and our liturgy and our music, all the things that we use in the liturgy are meant to raise us up and to give us an experience of the other world because it is something utterly transcendent. And indeed, that's why we come to Mass. We come to Mass this morning on this Feast of the Transfiguration to be ourselves changed, to be transfigured. There's a transfiguration that happens at the altar when the elements are transformed, transubstantiated into the body, blood, soul and divinity of Jesus Christ. But there's also a transfiguration, there's also a transformation that takes place or should take place within our souls. And of course it depends on how we come to Mass. We have to come to Mass predisposed for that transfiguration that God wants to accomplish within each one of us. And in order to do this, we have to be attuned. That is why those final words of the Gospel today should res resonate so profoundly with us. Listen to him. And to listen to him, we have to have silence. That's why silence is important in the liturgy. That's why silence is important in our lives. I think one of the great benefits of this shutdown that we've been through is the fact that we've been able to have a little bit more silence in our lives. Silence so that we can reflect on the things of God better. Today as we celebrate our Lord's Transfiguration, we remind ourselves of the central Christian doctrine that Jesus Christ our Lord and God is both God and man divine and human two natures united mysteriously in that one person it's something we called to mind only yesterday when we celebrated the dedication of the Basilica of St Mary Major which was constructed to celebrate that great truth of Mary's motherhood she's mother because she gave birth in the flesh to Jesus, man, and also because he is God. Let's ask our Blessed Lady today to help us to be transfigured with her Son when we come to Mass, to expect to be changed, to be expected to change from these human natures that we have now to the divine level to which God is daily calling us.
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Sanctify, O Lord, we pray these offerings here made to celebrate the glorious transfiguration of your only begotten Son, and by his radiant splendour cleanse us from the stains of sin through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he revealed his glory in the presence of his chosen witnesses and filled with the greatest splendour that bodily form which he shares with all humanity, that the scandal of the cross might be removed from the hearts of his disciples and that he might show how in the body of the whole church is to be fulfilled what so wonderfully shone forth first in its head. And so with the powers of heaven we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of you. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Alan, our Bishop, and all those who hold into the truth and on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servant. And all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you, for them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves, and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true, in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, our spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Clatus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damien and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation, and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord, Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to your God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. <laughs> in a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing 
and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty. So that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, in all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light and peace. To us also, your servants who those sinners Open your abundant mercies. Graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours, for ever and ever. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you, always. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord.
spiritual communion. I wish, Lord, to receive you now with the purity, humility and devotion with which your Most Holy Mother received you and with the spirit and fervour of the saints. The body of Christ.
When Christ appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Let us pray. May the heavenly nourishment we have received, O Lord, we pray, transform us into the likeness of your Son, whose radiant splendour you willed to make manifest in his glorious transfiguration through Christ our Lord. Remind you, tomorrow, the first Friday of the month, Holy Mass is at midday, and there's a holy hour from 7 till 8 tomorrow, which is live-streamed, hopefully for the last time, because from the 15th of August we'll resume normal schedule. I do remind you, however, that the government requires to wear face coverings in all public places and places of worship, as from this weekend. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Jesus, our Lady of Saint Joseph. 